The third story is about Teshu Fujioka, the acupuncture doctor by day, acupuncture assassin by night, that almost saved a yame from Dr. Kimaira in a yame story. Just like Rikimaru and Ayame, Teshu's first assignment is to kill Natsu and Echigoya, who are running a kidnapping scam. But when he gets there, he sees that he was beaten to the kill. He hears a voice and a few sword slashes and then nothing. Who the heck was that, Teshu thinks for a second before his boss, Zenosuke, pops out of the shadows with a lantern. How much of a badass are you at hide and seek when you can creep up on a shadow assassin with a light on a stick. Anyway, Zenosuke is the leader of Muzin, the association of assassins. Teshu is mad because they aren't going to get paid for this and Zenosuke is like, don't worry about it. You don't want beef with an Azuma ninja. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you not to beef with an Azuma ninja. Well, we all know that a hard head makes a soft ass because Teshu ignores that order and heads to go to his castle, home of the Azuma Ninja, to find Rikimaru and prove he's a better killer. Seriously. He goes into Lord Gota's castle and kills a bunch of on-the-job security just to be like, I'm pretty good too, you know. Straight up testosterone. How in the hell are you going to whine about not getting paid, but then decide to go on a free mission to prove how professional you are? Don't make sense at all. This is why we need to listen to our friends more. So Teshu kills all those guys and drives out Rikimaru. Then they fight to a stalemate and establish mutual respect even though Rikimaru didn't even know why the hell Teshu was there in the first place. Teshu's reasoning is dumb as hell anyway. I'm sure he was not about to tell Rikimaru the truth. We all have a friend who is always creeping around and doing dumb stuff. Anyway, Teshu is like, If we ever meet again, one of us will die. Which, I mean... Given what he just did to all the employees in the castle, I'm surprised Ricky Maru lets him just walk away, but whatever. Video game logic. So on the next assignment, he kills a dude named Yuge, a vassal of Tado Koro. A vassal is someone that governs the land in the name of a lord. Then after that, Tado Koro dies suddenly and everyone's power dies with him. Teshu gets challenged to a duel to avenge the death of Yuge. He goes to the meeting spot, but it's surrounded by Ronin Samurai, basically mercenaries. Regardless, he sneaks his way through and finds a woman ready to kill him. Teshu does a pretty cool spin move and pops a pressure point that temporarily paralyzes her. That was a lot of peas. <laughs> then he puts her in a cabinet. A few seconds later, the Ronin Samurai show up. He tells them he's already killed the girl and that he wants a piece of the assassination money. But the Ronins tell him that he's actually part of the deal. Teshu is like, I am, am I? Well, that makes things easier for me. He kills the Ronins and tells the girl to forget his dad and be free. Upon realizing that she sucks at life, she goes on to be a housewife or something. I don't know. The next mission has Teshu kill Ganda, the leader of a cult who was part of a kidnapping scam from earlier. And Teshu handles Ganda quickly but has the feeling he's being watched by the man who put the hit out on him. He wanders around the temple looking for him but ends up getting ambushed and captured. The man who captures him is a man by the name of Jinai, a former member of Muzin. Jinai knocks out Teshu and puts him in a cell in the limestone caverns. When Teshu wakes up, Jinai says he will let him out if he kills Zenosuke for him. Teshu is like, hell nah, and Jinai leaves him there. But that was all a ploy by Teshu to get the information he needed because he was able to free himself 
So easy. So, instead of heading directly to Zenosuke to warn him of Jinai, he goes to meet up with Senkichi to get his money for killing Ganda. But again, he is too late as Jinai gets there way before Teshu and kills Senkichi with a partner in cold blood. Yeah, Jinai actually knew about the handoff point, the meeting point of all Muzen people, so that was a secret spot that they all knew. But why would he go there instead of going straight there to get Zenosuke? I have no idea. Well, it's time to go back to the village and see how good old Zenosuke is doing. And Teshu makes it back to Zenosuke's house to see him sitting there ready to give Teshu his next mission. Kill Jinai and his band of samurai. Zenosuke tells Teshu that Jinai came and tried to assassinate him, but Zenosuke can't be killed by normal criminals. After all, he can creep up on people in the middle of the night with a lantern. Zenosuke hands Teshu his payment in advance and tells Teshu it's the last job because Zenosuke is thinking about retiring. And Teshu says farewell and leaves just before Zenosuke dies from his fatal wound. So Teshu heads to the spot where Jinai is waiting for him. Jinai tries one more time to recruit him, but Teshu already took the job to kill him. It's a matter of professionalism. You understand. They fight, and Teshu kills Jinai pretty easily for the end guy. And as he walks up to Jinai to confirm the kill, he calls out loud for Sakio to come out. It turns out that Jinai was the team of twin brothers Yukio and Sakio. Yukio was the mastermind while Sakio was the killer. I have no idea why Yukio was there waiting for Teshu when he wasn't the fighter, but whatever. And Sakio was done being a twin anyway. So that was the summary, and now it's time to play the ending. I'm coming. Wait, wait You for... two have really Jeez. changed. So have you. This place will blow up any minute now. This whole village? Lame. Wow. Oh, Common thug. That's good. That's real good. Really? Suck you. I'm sending some friends to join you. What? A needle to the neck. If we meet again, one of us will die. Well, now we're even. When the law fails to serve justice, one can buy justice. Time will only tell if the flaws of legal systems will ever be fixed. But in the past, murder for hire was a profitable but dangerous underground business that filled in the holes of the law. Okay, this is editor Yusef, and before uh, normal Yusef goes into the whole rant about the story and Teshu and what he thinks about Tenchu 3, 
Um, I want to point out that in Ayame's story, uh, she had to fight Janai. And now that it's revealed in this story that Janai is actually a set of twins, or a, a group of twins, two twins, I don't, I don't know how do you say it, but um, now that it's revealed, um, what happened in Ayame's story was that she was fighting the strong twin, and before she actually, she actually um, engaged with that twin in the final time. Tatsumaru actually threatened the weak twin who was hiding behind a tree, which is, you know, from what just happened, was revealed in Teshu's story. He basically just hides, and then he does all the wheeling and dealing while the strong one does the fighting, right? So while the strong one was fighting, Tatsumaru threatened the weak one with a kunai knife, and the uh, strong one realized that and backed off. And um, you wouldn't know that if you were just going through Ayame's story. And it was a very small little detail that I didn't pick up for a long time until I did these uh, plot summaries. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, anyway, back to the regular. Alright, so that was the ending of Teshu's story for Tenchu Return, uh, well, Return from Darkness. I liked it. I, I, I actually... I have to say, the thing that draws me into these Tenchu games is the stories are pretty complete. I mean, these stories were... The, the story was good in the first one, the second one. It, had, it lacked a little bit of atmosphere, but the story was well, well documented from, from three different sides. And in this one, we get three different stories that were pretty decent, you know? Uh, they didn't they somehow were able to put new spins on the same old Ninja tropes that they've been working for three games now So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed Teshu's story being added in there made made it a little bit more interesting Except for that whole part of him come going into Gota's castle and killing a whole bunch of guys just so he can challenge Ricky Maru that was stupid <laughs> Like, uh, if it's a woman, if it's a Yame, he's like, ah, I'm just gonna stop fighting right here, and I'm gonna follow you to wherever you are captured so I can try and free you, and you have a good day now, you know? But, you know, Teshu, when he runs in, when he sees Ricky Morrow is taking his kill, oh, he can't... He can't, like, he can't get over it. He's gotta go and face Ricky Morrow just to prove... That he's halfway decent. Dude, you're a fucking assassin, man. I, seriously. Like, if I was an assassin, I wouldn't want to fight anybody unless I was being paid to. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm like that. I teach tennis. I'm like that tennis. I'm not teaching anybody without being paid. You know, unless it's my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Let alone some guy that that uh, impresses me. Oh, you're a pretty good player. I'll teach you for free. Fuck that shit. It, Teshi's gonna be out there. Oh, I just want to prove that we're equal. Like, why? Why? Somebody's got a little insecurity, man. You're a damn doctor. Is that not enough? Being a doctor. And an assassin, you save lives and you take lives at the same time. You basically a, a god. You know what I'm saying? But that's not enough for him. He get he gotta be the best life taker in all of the fucking province or whatever. So he's gotta come after uh, Ricky Maru, and Ricky Maru's just doing his damn job. He's probably he's at home sleeping, chilling, just. Doing whatever ninjas like Ricky Maru do, probably cleaning off his sword. That's what they do. They just tap dust on it. You know what I'm saying? And they they uh, do some sort of special special uh, praise uh, ceremony to the sword. You know what I'm saying? And they put it in its rightful spot, just as he's about to take his damn mask off. Right? Some of his body armor and stuff. Here comes that alarm. Teshu's just killing folks. Really? Like, it just flabbergasts me why Ricky Maro doesn't just... Why the hell are you even here, bro? Yeah, I know who you are. I saw you 
at the last place where I killed the guy. What do you want? What kind of fucking ninja kills everybody before he goes in there anyway? Oh, I'm a professional. Well, you're supposed to kill a target. You killed everybody in the whole palace. Congratulations. Professionality. Professionalism. <laughs> I am so surprised he didn't make any enemies. Like, Lord Goto wouldn't have just put a contract on his dumbass head the moment he left. Ricky Morrow comes up. Yes, there was a man. You know how Ricky Morrow speaks in code. Uh, what happened? Was there a disturbance? Uh, no, sir. No disturbance for me, anyway. Yeah. All those dead dead bodies, though. I don't know. Lord Goto would send his ass like, okay, well, whatever the hell that disturbance was, it killed most of the night watchmen we had. Now we're going to have to pull people from the damn army to watch in the palace now. Like, seriously, being, being a watchman is a shitty job in, in that area. I'd never want to do it. Dude, I, I'd rather run out on the field with swords and scream my head off than pace back and forth waiting for a damn ninja to cut my throat. Anyway. <laughs> Story was good. I enjoyed it. I, I do enjoy Teshu because he's... He's an archetype example of, uh, you know, shorter, heavier set type of ninja that just handles shit on a uh, on a different level than than um, Ayame and and Ricky Maru. His story was actually pretty short, which I was kind of surprised about. But you know, after working through those two stories, the third one, I'm fine with it being short. You know, Tatsumaru's story in the second one was pretty short as well. But that was because it was intertwining with everybody else's stories. Anyway, you guys um, leave me a comment. And tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you think that acupuncture, acupuncture doctor. I mean, it's a doctor, doctor by day, assassin by night is is like a, a actually a pretty decent trope. You know, like a doctor just doesn't do night shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> nobody gets hurt at night he just takes day calls you know he just has a little clinic i mean all the doctors i know they they got horrible hours but somehow these guys got enough time to be vigilantes and shit or not vigilantes assassins like iron monkey is another one iron monkey was a doctor by day in that movie and then he just well fuck it he's gonna Rob from the rich and give to the poor. By night. Shouldn't you be doing doctor shit? What happens if somebody's pregnant? You know, comes running and, oh my god, uh, I'm gonna have this baby now. It's like, well, uh, uh, doctor, doctor, um, Teshu's not in right now. Like, fuck! Where the hell is he? He's, he's, uh, conducting some other business. Yeah, sure. Not making enough money as a doctor, obviously. Gotta be an assassin on the side. <laughs> anyway, you guys, have a nice, uh, nice time. Uh, leave, leave something in the comments. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.